Hello everyone, we have Mr. Anurag Myral from Stanford University who has just received a wonderful letter of appreciation from none other than the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji. It's a matter of pride for all of us and Consulate General of India in San Francisco, the body which is celebrating the Republic Day of India, the 73rd Republic Day of India in San Francisco has also honored you on the stage with this wonderful letter by Honorable Modi ji. So big congratulations and what's your reaction? Well, it's uh, it's really an honor. Um, honestly, when we do the, the work that we do, uh, it's uh, it's really uh, focused on the impact that we are trying to make. And, and the work that I, that I do is not alone, it's with uh, a number of um, uh, innovators in India, uh, our partners, our uh, advisors that we bring on. Um, so it, uh, an effort of this kind cannot be done alone, it takes a village. Um, so honestly, I, when I got this letter, it was a pleasant surprise, but I it, I really considered this to be validation of where India is getting to with health technology innovation. We started this um, uh, Stanford India Biodesign program about uh, 14 years back, and it has taken us this long to sort of build that ecosystem and the role that these innovators are playing in dealing with India's healthcare challenges, especially during this pandemic, has been phenomenal. So I, I really consider this to be a, an award for all of them. It's really on their behalf I, I, I got this letter. Design is a very unique, uh, basically, collaboration. Uh, instead of training or instead of helping one idea, Stanford India Biodesign takes a systematic approach to a much larger problem, which is uh, how can we leverage the experience and expertise of clinical doctors and translate that into commercially viable uh, products that actually help the masses of India. So Stanford India by Design, you know, enables that. So on a day-to-day -day basis, tell us more about your role and your functions, like in what way you contribute uh, in the world uh, science and technology arena and particularly uh, for India, like what are your contributions directly and indirectly? Yeah, I, I grew up in a very small uh, uh, city called Raipur uh, in Chhattisgarh, which is very rural. And I grew up looking at the unmet needs in that community. Uh, so when I came to this country and I went through the education that I did uh, and ultimately got to Stanford, um, part of the uh, a center called Center for Biodesign, uh, we were looking at which parts of the world can we bring this methodology of medical technology innovation to. And India seemed like a really important country to take it to. A lot of clinical needs and a lot of talent. So that bringing uh, that talent to a methodology that can uh, understand and met needs in, uh, on the ground in India and come up with medical technologies to solve those problems seemed like a very important goal. Um, my, my work uh, over the last 14 years has really been working with my fellow professors and innovators in India, um, helping them train in this methodology. And then once they had done uh, the needs finding and they had come up with new technologies, at this stage, last few years, we've been really focusing on how do you get those technologies to as many uh, underserved as possible in India. So that's really where most of my work uh, actually is focused. My stay at Stanford was um, very productive and um, actually um, I was a senior most member of the team but this fellowship really taught me that how to form a team this irrespective of whatever may be the qualification or the age differences. So we really uh, became a very well knit and a well united team and can give our productive inputs in each and every aspect. Overall the Stanford uh, campus was wonderful and they are really uh, a mecca of innovation actually and they taught us right from the basics of uh, innovation to a high level how a device is commercialized. The, the flexibility of taking different courses which uh, you uh, want according to your interest uh, uh, it was, was a great experience. Uh, we took multiple courses in various uh, departments uh, and met uh, numerous people who have uh, done uh, you know, entrepreneurship uh, and has been successful uh, in those things. 
So, uh, your technology benefits like which sections of the society when you assess the need, like uh, what are the focus areas? You use, a, you use a very good phrase, assess the need. That's a really the, the first focal point for the methodology. Needs identification is, is the start of that process. Um, and and when, this, when we initially trained these innovators, we didn't know which areas would they focus on because it was very much up to them to look at the needs and, and prioritize those needs. What we were very pleasantly surprised about and, and really thrilled about was that a vast majority of these innovators focused on the underserved needs. So whether it's neonatal resuscitation, um, you know, newborns who don't have access to resuscitation uh, technologies or it's here screening for them or uh, you know uh, uh, maternal health technologies so these are most of these are underserved uh, parts of the parts of the country um, it does uh, help a broader uh, nation as well uh, and ultimately it might these technologies may help rest of the world uh, but the starting point for many of these innovators uh, is really the underserved settings in, in India and uh, how do you take care of the funding part I believe that any innovation has a big cost you know launching that that in the market and then distributing it to the needed sections that's a big task how do you handle that yeah health technology innovation is a very complex uh, process and it requires a number of different things it requires talent requires technological capacity requires infrastructure requires policy environment requires funding um, so there are eight or nine major barrier areas and in fact that is exactly what we've been working on for the last 14 years to overcome as part of the ecosystem um, you know fortunately government of India has been really proactive about supporting innovation in India um, and uh, the startup uh, nation uh, you know uh, framing of, of where India is going uh, as a result a lot of uh, early stage funding has been relatively easier to come by and for that I really give a lot of kudos to the Indian government um, but I think we have we see a lot of venture capitalists a lot of uh, other investors that are starting to make investments in the later stage of of uh, technology implementation um, but that's not that's only part of the, the the solution i think we also need a lot of talent a lot of manufacturing one of the key challenges and we heard earlier today that there is a major elect electronics manufacturing initiative hundreds of thousands of crores that indian government is going to be investing in uh, a part of that investment could go towards uh, medical technology manufacturing capacity that requires advanced electronics manufacturing for for example for pacemakers and things like that so um, my hope is that as india builds this these infrastructural capabilities and we take on the role of training the talent and we help to bring together the ecosystem that adopts these technologies and bring them to the last mile uh, I think in another decade India will not only solve its own healthcare challenges it will become a net provider of these solutions to other countries in, such as in Africa uh, Europe and, and United States so so far have you received any positive testimonials you know um, what I have felt like a lot of non-profits when they work for the benefit of the underprivileged people in India they get a lot of good response you know and um, good wishes the hopes aspirations you know and they they just uh, um, really become happy because they really need it and then you go like a Masiha and a God and then you you know uh, bring light in their life so how has your experience been so honestly uh, there is quite a bit of that uh, but these are very um, you know uh, mature innovators they recognize that what they are doing is while it's making an impact on a lot of these lives and that, that that's the motivation that they have many of them have not been making a lot of money in these early stages of their innovation their innovators that, that have been at their innovation for six seven eight years they could go work at a large company and make a lot of money um, and yet they, they don't they've chosen to do this uh, I think there's a sense of mission that they have um, you know uh, including one of my fellow professors who are involved in it um, and uh, it feels more of a privilege to us so even though there is that reception that you get from from a broader community and this letter is an example of it uh -huh. honestly uh, I think I'm speaking for all of us uh -huh. uh, and there is, this community is now a thousand plus people strong uh, we think it's a privilege we are lucky to be given this opportunity how many times do you get to create an entire you know innovation ecosystem and create something completely new 
So 10 years from 15 years from now, when we look back, we would have the, the pride of having done that and having touched those lives. But um, I think what we are hearing from our beneficiaries and our, our, our from the a larger sort of healthcare ecosystem uh, is is gratifying. But the biggest privilege, the biggest privilege is ours. The biggest problem is the problems that we are going to be facing in the next few decades are not easy to solve also. Many of them don't have, don't have vaccines that can address that, those problems. You know, uh, the kinds of challenges that we are talking about, you know, we're talking about water, air, food, things that we consider to be our, our life-sustaining elements, they are actually disease-causing uh, vectors now. Um, Ebola and Zika are becoming global menace. Lack of economic progress is directly connected with global health problems. So, in light of, uh, of those challenges, the kinds of solutions that we have developed so far, we really uh, can't be counting on them. There's something else that's going on. There's a darker side and a brighter side to what's happening in the world today. Historically, uh, the rest of the world, let's call it, versus Western world, rest of the world was richer. India, China had 25% each of global GDP, 1,000 plus years back. They were rich and they were healthy whereas Western world was poorer and sick. Over the years, hundreds of years, post-scientific revolution in particular, West got richer and healthier, and the rest of the world had difficulty maintaining health of its citizens, its, uh, its uh, residents. Well, things are changing again. The rest of the world is becoming economically more affluent, technologically more advanced, with more human capacity, and the West is starting to, to uh, decline. And the trajectory, as you can see there, it's actually coming together. Will these two meet or cross over? Regardless, we need to be working together. So top three products that you're really proud of, you know, or maybe they're complex inventions, or maybe they are the top priority because they serve the needs of the most underserved in the best possible way. I, I, it's so hard. It's like asking which child is your favorite child. Yes, yeah. um, I'm going to mention a few very quickly, uh -huh. uh, but by, by no means are those the, the, are those the only ones, uh -huh. or, the, or, the, or the only the best ones. Uh -huh. There are others that are amazing, but I'll, I'll just mention a few. Uh, there's one that that is very innovative. It's the first innovation in 40 years in the space of neonatal resuscitation. Most of the resuscitation happens through this ambu bag, where a clinician and a nurse actually uh, holds the baby and uses a, a, a mask and a and a, a, a sort of a air delivery device to do the resuscitation. This clinician, uh, Dr. Vijit Bansal, came up with a foot pedal operated uh, neonatal resuscitator where uh, one clinician or one healthcare worker, uh, even a nurse, could actually do the resuscitation of baby who's actually um, asphyxiating, dying because of because he or she cannot breathe in the early stages of uh, you know, newborn uh, sort of uh, stage. Um, so that's one. The other, another one is this hearing screening technology, which includes a lot of AI ML in there as well. Uh, and this actually brings a really complex set of technologies to the field in a very simple way. So uh, hearing screening screening for newborns is very difficult in villages and so on. Um, this innovator um, has has, uh, has developed, um, you know, Soham is the name of the technology, uh, uh, this technology which can work in, in with a lot of ambient noise as well. Um, so really remarkable last mile technology. Uh, another one that I'm really fond of is um, uh, a Forest Health ophthalmological uh, device, uh, which is actually a, a fundus camera that you can apply uh, deploy across villages. Um, it's a hardware innovation, but then the, on top of that is a systems innovation which takes that data and brings it to a central facility uh, at a provincial level, a state level, Andhra Pradesh or other places where that data can be analyzed and uh, patients in these rural areas who have various ophthalmological conditions can be screened and then they can be moved on to the next level of clear care and it will save a lot of eyesight. So just three examples, there are many, many, many other examples. It's, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, my, my, other, my other innovators will, will, will recognize uh, which innovations I'm talking about but uh, well, that really sounds pretty exciting and for those who are youngsters and who want to step into a similar arena and follow the footsteps of Dr. Anurag Myral and other professors in Stanford who are deep diving into innovation every single day thinking about it every single moment you know being an entrepreneur in themselves like thinking out of the box bringing something to the table very constructively. I mean, it's not an easy task, but I know many of them will be interested in doing that. 
so how do they make you the mentor how do they be there where you are and try to you know take some baby steps yeah so I uh, one of the things that I started to do uh, five or six years ago when I had my uh, older two kids in high school was start to mentor high school students uh, at an organization called Seva International um, and I started volunteering with them I started mentoring these high school students in the same methodology that we teach Indian innovators we have brought the same methodology to these high school students now this program has gone national there are 150 or so students who are going through this program every year uh, and they actually use this methodology not just for health technology innovation but broader societal innovation homelessness energy uh, energy crisis the uh, climate change crisis and so on um, so um, uh, those who are in high school I would encourage them to consider joining Seva's lead program uh, we have a program within that called design to lead where we teach this methodology it's a lot of work um, but if you are willing to put in the effort and learn this process I'm very happy to engage you there as a mentor I have a teaching team that I've trained that actually do a great job of so I'm actually also developing a set of teachers that can teach this but I'm, I, I'm very deeply engaged with that well, wonderful and how did you really think PM Modi got to know the big news about your you know long list of innovations you know sometimes you do big things but it doesn't reach the top <laughs> I, I am super impressed by the Prime Minister's office and, and Modi ji about this because you know the work that we do it's it's usually in the in the in the background, right? I mean, uh, our technologies and our innovators get the get the limelight, which is which is how it should be um, for uh, a, a leader of such a large nation who's got so many priorities for uh, him and his team to. Uh, uh, identify this as something uh, worthy of acknowledgement I am really impressed and it, it gives me a lot of hope uh, because what it means is that the the government and the leaders of this this this, this government of this great nation uh, are clear about where they should really be investing their energies and honestly this has already created I, I made a post about this on LinkedIn and the entire ecosystem has sort of come around uh, this acknowledgement and I have really made it very clear that it's really acknowledgement of all of them and it really gives a lot of energy and a lot of sort of uh, encouragement and motivation to all of them uh, saying that what we are doing is actually being noticed and I, I'm really really thankful to uh, Modi ji and I, I don't know if you'll ever get to hear this uh, but I'm really hoping that that he knows how appreciative uh, all of us are in uh, medical technology innovation community in India and one promise that we make to you and to the nation in India is is that um, oh, in the next decade we'll we'll do all that we can uh, to make India not only self-sufficient in terms of medical technologies but make it a provider of solutions for the rest of the world. The reciprocal innovation changes the framing of innovation. Innovations used to be uh, developed here in the Western world and in, in San Francisco and in Seattle and DC and New York and, and other parts of Europe and then they were parachuted in to Africa and Asia and Latin America and they, they did wonders. Uh, vaccines have done remarkable uh, jobs of, uh, of treating uh, diseases in these countries but that does not work any longer for several reasons. What the reciprocal innovation does, which is different from, from the traditional model of innovation, is that it flips the focus of innovation. The need has to be identified in the region where the needs are. It actually brings the solution from ground up, but it brings in partners from around the world as needed. No longer are the problems understood on the ground, but then solutions are being developed in the labs here. Uh, that, that is no longer going to work. So if we can do this together, if we pool our resources together, my hope is that we can reach that utopia uh, up on the left side where we have a lot of resources, we have pulled together our resources, we have abundance of resources, but the problems are few. Thank you. Wow, that's amazing. So on the auspicious occasion of the 73rd Republic Day of India, what's your message to all the viewers of Yo! India TV? Um, my my uh, appeal and uh, and and call to action that I have uh, to all the all the viewers, especially those who are connected with India and engaged with India, is that India is is an, at an amazing juncture in its evolution. It's a young uh, democracy, but it has a very old 
uh, civilization and uh, the rightful place for India is to become to solve not only challenges of its own people rise the rise its people above poverty above the hardships above healthcare challenges and education and all the other challenges all large co uh, countries have not only to do that but also to be a positive impact on rest of the world so what I would appeal to all of you who are watching this is to join forces with likes of us uh, in uh, supporting the work that is going on in India with India and and make sure that that work scales whatever you can do if you're a technologist if you are an investor if you are a civic society uh, member if you're a part of an NGO if you are a policymaker please help uh, because your help will make sure that we reach that promised land and it will actually uh, be good for the for the 7.8 billion people in the world it's not just for the 1.3 billion people in, in India and I just heard you saying a sustainable solution so he wants a scalable sustainable you know robust solution you know come up with something good and then take it across I think that's the message and that's how you will be appreciated and do good for one and all thank you so much Dr. Anurag Myral for all your philanthropic and innovation oriented efforts uh, we truly appreciate uh, your role as a Stanford professor as well as your role as the lead in Bay Area for the wonderful non-profit organization Seva International wish you get many more successes in future make many more innovative products and make us feel proud and help many many people across the world thank you again so much thank you thank you and Jahan.